Hey, it's Dr. Centeno, and you know, I was about to leave for my sabbatical uh, out in the Mediterranean, and one of the advances I've made lately uh, on the PICL procedure ha has so dramatically changed the nature of the procedure that I've decided to give the PICL procedure a, a new name. Uh, the EPICL procedure. So I wanted to record a quick video that explains what I mean when I say EPICL. So the procedure evolution. Uh, in 2013, this started uh, as a concept. And uh, at the time, didn't really know if this was even possible to do. Um, so that's way back here. And then, uh, by 2015 or so, it was established as a procedure. We, we had some sense of how to do it, what was possible, so we can call that version 1.0 of the procedure. And then as time went on in 2017, uh, we got to, you could call it version 1.1, where we started to go to a specialized 3D printed math piece. And then we go to 2018 now, where we're starting to add in endoscopy, starting to inject uh, above and below the atlas in version 1.2. And then by 2019, we're further refining that above atlas injection, so you could call that version 1.3. And then by 2020, uh, we're doing more mouthpiece design updates to improve that. So version 1.4. And then by 2021, um, really um, above Atlas at this point is starting to become more routine. We're again redesigning the mouthpiece to improve the whole thing. By 2022, we added the second C arm, which was a major jump. So you can see here, I I've have it going from 1.5 to 1.7. Um, and then finally, uh, the current iteration of the PICL, which I call version 2.0 or the EPICL. Uh, we are redesigning the mouthpiece again, but I have developed a technique to dramatically improve the targeting of the ALAR ligament. Uh, so let's go through that a little bit. So EPICL means Enhanced PICL Procedure. Uh, there's been dramatic improvement in targeting of the ALAR ligament. And I believe that it's so different now than what it used to be that we're going to see another jump uh, in outcomes and probably patients are going to need fewer procedures. Uh, and the difference before, I'll go over here in a second to now, uh, but all Colorado PICL providers are now performing the new EPICL procedure that I developed. All Centeno patients since approximately late 2024, I'm sorry, late February 2024, have received the EPICL uh, procedure. And recognize that I've trained nobody how to do this procedure outside of the physicians in Colorado. So that means that uh, there is no physician in Europe, India, Asia, or elsewhere in the United States that I have trained how to do this procedure. Uh, that's only Colorado physicians, and that's for a number of different reasons. Uh, and that's primarily because these procedures are complex enough that keeping patients safe and staying out of the wrong places in the space is very difficult. Um, so pine anesthesia in CCI patients is a challenge. Specialized 3D printed mouthpieces need to be used. Endoscopy, where we can visualize the area being ejected is a must. Two C-arms used simultaneously is really are really needed to improve targeting Digital subtraction angiography is required for all upper cervical procedures. Uh, and even just injecting the ligaments instead of swollen bursas in this area requires considerable skill because it's far too easy to park yourself inside a swollen bursa, 
which means you're not going to get any ligament tightening if you do that rather than targeting the actual ligaments and just understanding what that looks like right what does it look like when i'm in a bursa what does it look like when i'm in the ligament not anything that anyone outside of the Colorado physicians have been educated in and then uh, again targeting targeting the alar ligament accurately takes the epicl technique Previously, we were mostly catching the upper sling portion of the ALAR. Uh, now we are accurately targeting the main substance of the ALAR. Now, I'd like to show you some pictures, but there's been so many crazy doctors out there trying to see if they can use <clears throat> information that I post to see if they can replicate the PICL, in, in my opinion, in a very dangerous uh, way that I'm not gonna do that um, just because I, I don't want to foster irresponsible use of this procedure. Uh, again, we will get to the point where we have this fully, fully dialed in and we can start to train some people outside of Colorado. But for now, this remains a Colorado only procedure. So in summary, we continue to advance the PICL procedure and we're literally writing the book on upper cervical ligament injections as we learn more and more, and also uh, really of the anatomy of this area. Um, there are publications on the anatomy, but until you see how the anatomy is connected by injecting contrast into these individual ligaments, no one fully understands it, uh, frankly, like we do, because we're in there every day. We're at about 1,500 procedures now, and that's increasing uh, by, uh, a pretty uh, good clip, about 50 procedures a month or 300 procedures a year. Uh, we obviously inject the upper neck facet joints uh, about a thousand times a year, whereas the average clinic might do that three or four or five times a year. And we continue to see patients from all over the US, Europe, and Asia. So hopefully this helps you understand uh, the PICL and the EPICL a little better. And uh, you all have a, a wonderful uh, six weeks, and I'll be back doing Facebook Lives here in just a little bit. Thank you so much, and have a great day.